you, you have the Doom and Clock, and they're very versatile. It yes. can be your position four Clock, it can be offlane Clock, it can be mid Doom, it can be offlane Doom. Mm. But what's really important is that these heroes synergize well together, as you have a Clockwork that will always be able to find that Snapfire in yeah. the back. The Cookie, all right, is good versus him. Void Spirit yeah. as well is good versus him. And honestly, even Rubik is good versus him. So I have no idea why. Would you <laughs> Look, it's it? because they're squishy. The Clockwork can mm. find that initiation to yes. set up for the team fight. In addition, the vision will be very important. You want to get onto the back line. These two supports, like there's no save. You already see there's no save. So you've got to get on top of them. And if you end up in a fight... Uh, where that happens, like you're in big trouble. And I love this from Omega Lil, they recognize, hey, there's a pretty succinct lack of damage on Cyber Legacy. Yeah. Their early game is garbage, and but their team fight's going to be sick. So let's get these tier ones early. Now you don't have a, uh, maybe the Shredder won't be good later on in the game versus Phoenix, but Nature's Prophet is always good because you itemize in such a way that gives you a lot of attack speed. Yep. And later on, we saw in that game, EG versus VP, I think, in yeah. which Ramses was literally just killing eggs yeah. on his own on the Fu Nature's Furion Prophet. should be first, dude. I feel like I say this every TI, and I say at every tournament I work where you see it played in games. Fogged has been raving about how much damage level one ultimate does. The last few bounces all deal more than 350 magic damage. Mm -hmm. It is at so much damage. Even against this AM that comes out from Cyber Legacy, they are fully invested in the future. Omega Lil, they're worried about resources right now, taking these towers and ending this game quickly. Really nice synergy between a playmaking <laughs> mid like Void Spirit and a very aggressive off lane and or carry. Like the Furious. Yeah, so, it's wonderful. So Cyber Legacy now with this anti-mage, they are going for a little bit of a later game, right? That's mm. their full potential. That's where they're heading to. But in the mid game as well, early to mid game, once these pushes come from Megalil, they do have heroes that can stand their ground and defend these towers. You have some sick teamfight combos here, like uh, Kyle mentioned before, you have this Clockwork and Phoenix. For me, the most important thing is not to try and initiate with this Clockwork because they have... All of these four heroes can deal with the hookshot cog combo. But as a clockwork here, what, you, what your main goal should be is to protect the egg. That's how you're playing around. Egg first, then protect it with, with clockwork, perhaps blink stun from the doom, and just wait it out until AM comes online. Yeah. The trouble is you have just no real tower pressure yeah, and nothing. pick off. So the concern is that Omega Lil, I, I, you go one of two ways here. You pick a carry and or offlaner that just answers the animage. Uh, Legion Commander, as an example. Slardar could be appropriate. Or you just go for the GG. Um, it's a weird hero. We don't see it very often. But like a Visage, as an example, is right now just nigh unkillable. <clears throat> and you provide so much structure damage in early game that you could have like Ag Solar Crest. Furion has like Orchid BKB. And you just kill everything and yeah. go end game. Do you think it would actually be a Visage, Lizard? I'm not sure if they will pick it. It would be a decent game. The only thing that they have versus it is Scorched Earth and Phoenix. Like, Phoenix can be a little bit problematic, but um, Visage would be supported by such a cast that the egg wouldn't really matter. Yeah. Like, you would kill it too fast. And if you get a Q off on the Phoenix, like, you, yeah. you just die. So it, it, would, it would be a decent pick, but it would put you on a really uh, short timer. Like, you would have to take all these towers very early on. You would have to take major objectives, like push one side at least 20 minute mark. And you're not secret. And that's what they do. So maybe just go for your normal win condition on the last pick. But knowing Omega Lil, they have played Nature's Prophet mostly on one or two. Mm. So this should be your one or two Nature's Prophet. Same goes for Void Spirit. And last pick uh, should be their offlane, I, I believe. So oh. let's just see. All right, there you go. That's the Doom mid then, I suppose, wow. right? Into the Void Spirit. I'd say Doom's <laughs> probably favored. You're not going to get harassed at the very least, but Void Spirit will be able to push the lane mm. pretty easily. Yeah, I think you just farm as Doom and you farm as Void Spirit. Yeah. Doom has been nerfed a little bit and your Devour uh, does not region you Timber's as much. Off. And Timber, there you go. That's your offlane. Into Doom, into, into Doom. AM. Yeah. I, I, this is a weird matchup where I've talked with Mu about this a lot. AM is tough to lane against. But the soul ring change, I think, will benefit Timber here. You almost definitely get one. And you do primarily pure damage. So you can kill the AM, but it's like AM can make your game really hard to play. And you also can't lock him down, right? So AM's going to be able to split push no problem. Omega Lil are going to need to end this game early yep. and or just have such a massive map control advantage that they out-resource Cyber Legacy so yeah, heavily that the AM just doesn't come That's on one point. Do they reflect? 
the odds definitely do reflect the state of the game i i mm. believe so i think omega lil once again is the first game of the series and this timber so they picked it yesterday but it was the perfect timber game i don't think this is mm. a perfect timber game Indeed. agreed well it might not be the perfect timber game but we do have the perfect casters so let us begin the game now leave us the pantheon and go with to the stadium of triumph go enjoy the casters Omega Lil Cyber Legacy Let the battle begin That's right, it's time to get serious here as we are in the lower bracket of the Divine League playoffs here and we've got the most professional and serious analysts to be able to cover this match. BSJ is going to be joining me. Brian, what did you think about that draft? Not a huge fan of the last pick, Timbersaw. Yeah. I think their goal is to like overrun this anti-mage with the pace of the game, but they have the Doom. Clockwork's pretty good. Phoenix is pretty good. All these heroes mm -hmm. kind of kill Timber. You're supposed to hit this like critical threshold 10, 15 minutes in the game where you're unkillable. I don't think that's going to happen. So It did not feel like a gotcha pick, right? Yeah, it did not at all. Well, I guess we'll have to see what happens inside of the game. Maybe they have, uh, I don't know, is there something that they can like switch up the lanes that you would feel better about? It's not necessarily a lane thing. I think Timber's actually okay in landing against anti mitch mm -hmm. because you just get your mana burned. Yeah, once you you're out like of mana. Soul ring, and then you just hit him back, and yep. you have you know 10 free armor. He has three, so mm -hmm. you just win that, but... Timber for me is a game thing. Like, there's lanes that are bad, like Ursa and Slark, that can potentially go wrong. But most yeah. of the time, it's that eight to 15 minute window where you're just barreling down lanes and you say, I dare you to four man gank me. And then it just doesn't happen. Well, we could be getting into some action nice and early here as we've got a five man smoke from Omega Lil. Just fresh off the victory, 2 1 against Siberium Seed. They've been losing a lot of game ones lately but have been managed to bounce back most of the time. So we'll see how they do here. Again, Cyber Legacy, the kings of their groups, I believe only lost one game in the entirety of their group stage. So they That's are a fearsome op op opponent for sure. I, uh, wow. looks like they might be looking for a kill at the bottom rune. Yeah. They've got wards set up on That's either exactly side of the jungle good. here to be able to see if there's any Latecomers here to this Bounty Rune fight where they could collect a kill there, and maybe that's where they can actually find it. Doom is cutting across. They're going to quickly scramble. Hide! Hide, everybody! It's like a surprise birthday party. Oh, I've they actually see I've, the ward place. You've had a surprise birthday party? I actually have not. No, I've actually I've had, had that. Let me tell you, I was surprised because, like, I, it's one of those where you know something's off. Mm. And you're just clueless because it's three days before your birthday and you're just not thinking about it. Mm. And uh, Oh, he went say, blink first yeah. and didn't get the bounty. In fact, he's going to be taking a lot of damage as he goes. Kuman, another eight seconds until he's got it up. And the Timber Chain is going to do so much. They may actually get this first blood. Kuman, two more seconds, but the Timber Chain cuts him down. The first blood is there. And much like Kuman, Brian... I don't really have any friends growing up, so you can't really have a surprise birthday party. Uh, I was going to say, I don't know who was more surprised, me growing up or him blinking out of the rune into, <laughs> into the snapfire right there. All right. Well, now we've got the bounty rune fight underway. Let's go ahead and introduce this game in real, Brian. Welcome, everybody, to the Divine League playoffs, where div elimination is on the line for these two teams. Let's start off on the dire side. They 2 0 to Omega Lil in the groups, and they're about to get a kill on Blizzy, featuring Kuman, Magical, Blizzy, Bignum, Sioma the Slayer. They are Cyber Legacy! And on the Radiant side, featuring Kellen, Sunlight, Malik, Lil, and Happy Deer. You know them. You love them. They are Omega Lil. I'm fucking hype right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> sick. Uh, you know, you just want to make sure we're starting this game out right. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. It's a 2 well well ready for Omega Lil, and they're feeling good about their lanes. We'll see. Do you think they should, uh, at some point, they should try and lane the Timbersaw to make his life that much harder? Are you okay with these dual lanes? 
Oh, I'm okay with the lanes. I, I really don't think... I, I think what they're thinking about the timber saw is the same thing as I am. Like, maybe he's going to have a decent start or whatever, but we're going to all in this guy a couple times with the Doom. Maybe even just the clock with an Ion Shell T being in and, and his game's over. So just don't bleed for the first five to ten minutes from the side of Cyber Legacy. But then after that, we're good to go. Oh, pulling back. Sunlight. Managed to catch him with the Aether Remnant. Not going to obviously be enough to kill, but a decent amount of damage. The real threat here could be Lil, who's taken the full Fire Spirit's damage. Looks like Slayer was running out, though. So he dives away. Healing sounds up before the Timber Saw could close in on him. His Void Spirit's been a very important hero for Omega Lil. It's crazy how high they value this hero. They picked it up six times. have only lost once with it. And they've actually banned it seven times as well. So they just think the hero is really good. Such a feast or famine hero, honestly. Mm. I can see how a team would have a, either a very high view of the hero or a very low view of the hero. As Doom actually getting pretty bodied in the mid lane thus far. Doubled up on the CS. I don't think that's supposed to happen, man. I oh, nice cookie there. Happy. Oh, the vacuum pull back in, though. They might actually be able to run down Kellen here. Happy. Trying to save him with the slowdown of the shotgun, but it does not bail him out. Fortunately, Nature's Prophet can get back to lane early, but still, that's got to be a devastating blow. Yeah, I'm almost surprised they didn't swap up the lanes, not for the sake of the Timber Saw, but for the sake of this Nature's Prophet Snapfire. These heroes are quite vulnerable to a Clockwork with Iron Shell just running on top of you and killing you, so uh, already seeing it play out here. Snapfire does have the cookie, but... Uh, it's weird. That matchup goes both ways, but with Darkseer, you're not nearly as much about the cogs with yeah. the Clockwork. You're mainly, mainly just about walking at people. And I think the same goes for Clockwork versus Nature's Prophet as well, right? Normally, that matchup sucks because he just gets a bunch of Treants out and you could never feel good about threatening him. Every single time you get on top of him, he just turns himself and all his Treants against you. But with the Ion Shells, you actually burn through the Treants super quickly. Yeah, that's why I think Darkseer and Clockwork in general just have such good synergy. They do alleviate a lot of each other's weaknesses. Magical, who was struggling super early. Oh, he's got the early. purge. He's going to be able to slow down Sunlight with the help of Big Nub. He actually rockets in for that last uh, last hit. I so. respect that. Hell yeah. How many creeps is Clockwork going to hit all game? Like That's like half of a Devour for Doom right there. He, he can mm -hmm. afford to lose it. Yeah. I, I will say, I was pretty surprised how bad the mid lane was going. I don't think I've ever seen Doom lose that badly to a hero that wasn't maybe like a Slardar or just some other lane dominator. I feel like Void Spirit's a pretty strong laner, but uh, as we do He's going to have to dive in. You could see Malik is trying to get one step ahead no of him. Preemptively left, timber chained. Doesn't have a whole left left in the tank. Spot Slayer hits him once, but that is going to be it. As far as that mid lane matchup, do you think some of that comes down to maybe the recent nerf? The level I, one yeah, devour, I feel like one, one health regen. regen in the mid lane would affect you less than others. That's why Theorycraft mm. would he be even more of a mid laner after the nerfs. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, I do agree it affects him, but I don't think it's supposed to be a bad... Oh, oh, the vacuum on the cookie! That was beautiful. Stops him from jumping anywhere. Brings that him back cool. down to earth. Five minute bounty runes are up. Yeah, I, I straight up favor Dire here on the laning stage, but I really oh, do think him? this game's going to get up. Is that going to be enough? It is. Sunlight gets the kill. He's just out playing magical, it feels like. Hop away. Big Num. He's, he's going to dare this tier one tower. He's faster than oh, Happy. He's, he's got the oh, ion shell okay. on him. So. It's hard to see it. Yeah. He's such a small little dude. The ion shell shrinks down to his size. Hopping on to Lil here. If they hit him with the Icarus Dive slow and a little bit of body blocking, they probably have this kill. Slayer, I think, is 100% dead. He, he the, just might oh, get no, the, the kill on Lil. He's the last one to hit. No, Lil actually ticks out anyway. And he managed to get the experience for it before he died. Hmm. I am so perplexed by this mid lane, I'll be honest with you. I just... I, I I actually feel like I've seen it go the other way pretty significantly on Doom. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second point Devourer at level 3 was the mistake. Maybe he took a few extra <laughs> trades he shouldn't have. Mm. I'd kind of have to watch it back. But either way, Doom is still level 6. Going to probably look to use that first Doom uh, sometime in the near future as he does get I'll ganked pull back again. In. Telekinesis, Astral Step. Is that the first one? Well, they don't need a second one, it seems. Sunlight gets another kill. Magical is just falling apart at this point. I'm not a fan of his item build. I think the Bracer's fine, but 
rushing phase boots against Void Spirit to me is is bad. I think he's queuing up the one. I think he already needed that. Trying to run him down. The battery is solved. The ion shell. It's doing so much damage. They're gonna try and turn it around. Kill Blissey. He does manage to take him down, but it this looks like they set up for the dream, double. Baby. Happy. He's being run down by the ion shell. Oh and my he's level just six dead. clockwork at seven minutes. Wow. Dude, this is the dream, man. This is the Yapsor treatment, but he's actually playing a Clockwork instead of like a Rubik. And the best part is he might just be able to bail out Magical's lane. If they get a Doom on him and then a hook shot, like Sunlight's just dead. Dead, dead, dead. So that's what they're going to go for here, but uh, you don't want to like end up in this situation where they expend everything and the mass TPs come in to bail Sunlight out. Their bottom lane's currently being taken, though, so they got to make something happen here. No, I like this rotation from Prophet. Uh, it's kind of a cool idea when cores rotate, something for people to think about, is that Nature's Prophet, when he goes back top, doesn't really feel that good because of the constant threat from the Ion Shell plus Clock. But Timbersaw, he likes to pressure this tower, but usually lacks the ability to actually push it with his kit. So bringing the Nature's Prophet to help out the Timbersaw's strengths and also protect himself from his own fragility at this stage in the game. And they were looking to potentially smoke to contest it, but... Probably just a bit too fast for their liking, and even though I said I didn't love that last pick, Timbersaw, this landing stage is going just great for Omega. Ah. Well, this is what I didn't like. We'll see if it backfires here. This is where they can just fully commit yep. onto the Timbersaw and punish him. The deny, not available. Lil couldn't get there fast enough. When Timbersaw dies to two heroes at eight minutes, that is not a good Timbersaw game. Yep. Yeah. Gonna be honest with you there. Yeah, it's... It definitely felt like a questionable pick all around. The, the analysts at the drafting panel weren't super hype with it. Don't think either one of us felt super happy. It certainly, again, was not like a gotcha last pick. And some people may say, like, he's just the off laner. Like, it's okay if he dies once or twice or whatever. The thing about Timbersaw is past, like, the 15-minute mark, he really is just so shit compared to other off laners. So you need this stage in the game to be where he is the absolutely most impactful. Yeah, he has certain parts that he just does not contribute at all, such as initiation, which is one of the primary reasons uh, you have offlaners in the first place. Same goes with like a lot of team fight power, uh, sustain and stuff, but... It's a really good move, stuff. though. He just focused on himself. Good rotation, though, from Omega Lil. Quick kill on a magical and take a tier one mid tower. Snapfire is already level six top. This is the benefit of having a carry like Nature's Prophet, he's going to be super active around the map. Gives your supports more net worth. You see a four-man tower taking twice already by Omega Lil as might be catching him underneath his own tower. Sunlight, will he be able to clean up here? <laughs> Has Maybe one astral use. step. Blizzy. Impatient. Pulled back by the Aether Remnant. That'll be enough burst damage with Lil there. <laughs> he's being really active on Sunlight. I do like what he's doing this game super instrumental to their success thus far. It's just, uh, the thing I'm concerned about is the second they lose any semblance of momentum, Omega Lil's in trouble. So they have to keep this up for at least another five or 10 minutes. And uh, only time will tell the answer to that question as the bounty runes are about to spot. Early tower advantage does go towards Omega Lil. Nice cookie there. Should be able to grab. Oh, doesn't want to stick around for the bounty room because Magical's super scary. Oh, oh what a two man stomp there. And they're stuck. They don't have. He, he doesn't have the level in it. Right? Snapfire doesn't have a level of his uh, pew pew pew. That's what we call a yike. Yeah, that's not good at all. He does, He's supposed to be the answer to the Phoenix, Brian. Yeah, he's certainly going to level that at seven. As uh, I think he was just like, yeah, I'm not interacting with the Phoenix yet. I'm getting solo levels underneath my tower. I'm level six. I'll just. Build all the or level all the abilities for the landing stage, and now he's been caught at level six because he died twice. Yeah. Sometimes it just works out like that. I, I can see his reasoning. Yeah. It's just like I was facing this exact situation, and I just remember thinking to myself, like, I want at level seven to get level four scatter blast. That's true. That ability feels so good. I don't want to have to like have that moment of regret of being yeah. like, oh, I didn't get little shredder until level eight. It's min max and gone wrong, right? Like, yeah. That's all it really is. We took a risk, and it certainly did not pay off. And as a result, they are falling a bit behind Omega Lil here, even with uh, a Doom, which is even more concerning, right? Because he's a bit of a. He has that net worth advantage usually from Devour. A lot of it comes from the towers they've taken from this Nature's Prophet, who's they're going to go on to the Timber Saw here, bounce him back with the Cox, try and make him trapped, and with the Battery Salt, he how doesn't do you get away. Play timber in this game? Yeah. Uh, even if they win, how do you want to play Timber against these heroes? Phoenix Clock are like two of the best supports against you. Yeah, they're strength heroes, but 
I don't know, man. Kuman. He uh, blinked in. Sunlight thought that was an opportunity, but with all that magic damage against an AM, looks can be a bit deceiving. AM proves to be tanky enough. Yeah. We see nice, it. Doom. Yeah, this, this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The story feels like it's almost written itself, where they're going to win the landing stage, but their heroes, they just don't scale. And so far, we saw even last series, similar story. Oh, oh my Oh, he's got the little God. shredder, but the centaur stomp comes in again. The phoenix egg does die, but it did so much damage. It looks like they may win the fight anyway. Look at Lil, though, manning up with a battery okay. self the fade bolts. He runs down the doom, and they do manage to get the kill on Big Num. Make a kill streak taken away. That is 400 gold for the timber saw for him to try and get a game back. If I was the Darkseer in an EU pub right now, I'd 100% be getting pinged saying, where are you? Mm. Come to fight. Even though I've watched a bunch of Darkseers and they always try to finish their mech when it's in a similar spot like this. Like, they usually need that bit of space, especially when you were the one dying in lane and your clock were getting solo kills afterwards. Yeah. So uh, it's just funny to me because this is, uh, it looks so close there for Cyber Legacy that the Darkseer might have been able to make the difference. So I'm, I'm confused. Are you, are you blaming Blizzy or are you forgiving yourself? I'm saying I feel like I would get blamed mm -hmm. and I watch this and say, hmm, I guess he would do the same thing. So I actually, you know, I'd have to ask Blizzy. You so know? you're forgiving yourself. That's I'm forgiving myself, but it's not because I, it, it's giving me some confirmation on my, I, my thought, but it mm -hmm. obviously doesn't make mm -hmm. it right or wrong. I just, I really wasn't sure up until this point if I was supposed to show up. And that's the beauty of Dota, right? The complexity in decision makings and it's unique how, on every hero. Yeah, it's unique on every hero. It's unique on every game. Maybe that would have been the right play to be at that bottom lane. Maybe it could have made the difference and they wouldn't have lost two heroes and won the team fight. But you just don't know. Who knows, maybe this mech will come in very, very clutch sometime soon. They're going to go into Kuman here, try and catch it before he can blink away. Delikinesis, it's not there. He was throwing his hands up in the air, but he wasn't fast enough. He was waving like he just don't care. Yeah, Radiant he definitely cared, PSJ. True. He definitely cared. It's the American way when the, we the, fail the, to act like the, we don't care. Despite his sponsor tag, which is apparently I don't care. True. <laughs> Something tells me Lil does care, though. If, if you are willing to, uh, to play under an alias. Dude, that was... When I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> That's next level, I guess. Trying to prove yeah. the bias of the people watching, I guess. Yeah. Maybe he wanted to see if all of a sudden people really loved Omega Lil while he was gone or something. He was on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he wanted to see if he played better without the pressure of being under his own name. I can relate to this in the capacity. Slacks asked me, you know, as a streamer, why do you sometimes turn your camera off? Mm. And for me, it, it really does... Feel ex you feel exposed yeah. when you're on camera sometimes, and you're like, I just want to be in my element, play some dotes. And you know, maybe for Lil, the backlash and the negative attitude of the of the public and the audience, maybe that got to him. Yeah, for the first time, I actually tried that. Turned off my webcam. Did How'd it, it feel? Did it for about two weeks. Felt pretty good. It I'm does. Just like, oh, man, playing Dota is a little bit more relaxing. It's even more relaxing when you don't stream at all. <laughs> oh, that's true. But you know, for me, that's not an option. I do have to eat. So. But yeah, the, the webcam turning off thing, it's its nice and liberating. As a Dota player, whatever it takes for each individual to be mentally there, you know? Mm. Just no distractions, complete focus, Zen mode. Because if the rest of your life isn't Zen, you're going to just lose your, lose your shit, Cap. Are they going to take this bait? Are they going to go on a yeah, melee? Yeah, even a sentry on the high ground. So many people behind him, but uh, yeah, they back up. 15 minute. Bounty runes are coming in. They want to secure this this side of things. Malik didn't feed hard enough earlier on. For me, that would have worked because I've died like six times at this point. And mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, this guy's a freaking dumbass. He's out of position awesome. again. And that's when my true prowess as an offlaner comes into play. Mm. You're just, but Malik, your understanding is just on another yeah, level. Yeah, he's just got to feed like one or two more times prior to this. He doesn't quite understand the full, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, embrace the team atmosphere role in the in the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, somebody's got to tank it. Yeah. Everybody else feels better about see, themselves. See, Blizzy understands, right? His yeah. clockwork is rich. Like, I understand he's still lower than the Rubik, but for a clockwork, having more than a thousand net worth is the dream. Yeah. I want to play four position with you, Brian. Yeah. I want to be that clockwork to your Darkseer. Thank you, buddy. 
14 to 13, and Omega Lil, well, they don't really have that net worth lead they once had, and it's beginning to get more and more concerning as now we see it, a Battle Fury finished up for the Animage. They are really wanting to take this tier 2 tower, I think, before 20 minutes. It's and really Cyber hard Legacy, to fight into this. Yeah, you can see they really don't want to let Omega Lil succeed with a plan like that. Cyber Legacy's map distribution right now is really good. Darkseer is the best hero to push mid, but also show up to the fight. Mm. So Antimage playing the opposite side of the map that Omega Lil is playing. And then the rest of Cyber Legacy is dedicating their resources to defending the tower. Whenever you're in farm mode, like your team is content with just farming, you just need to play reactionary to whatever objective you think the opponent's going to go for. So Omega Lil kind of telegraphing their objective to be bottom lane. And I like the way Cyber Legacy has played it. The cool thing that I like to describe this kind of stuff to about is the difference between Tier 1 and Tier 3 teams, I feel like, in this case, for Omega Lil, is that Tier 1 teams would disguise this a bit more. They mm. wouldn't make... It feels like they've been pushing at that bottom tower for the last two minutes as uh, Lizzie, for whatever reason, buddy, your Ion Shell does the job for you. You don't have to be there as he does die on top of the creep wave. That's what happens, Brian. Sometimes you put yourself out there. It doesn't go the way you thought it would, but uh, you, you just got to keep pressing on, you know? You can't stop putting yourself out there. We just got to keep going. I gave up putting myself out there a long time ago. Okay? Oh, no, Brian. That wasn't the lesson you were supposed to learn. Oh, sorry, buddy. This was the wrong life lesson. Yeah, we need uh, one of Fogged and Lacoste's 2,000 Pepe Frogs for that mm. one. If you guys don't know, they literally have every Pepe Frog on their ca on their phones. <laughs> you know our WhatsApp is going to blow up now. <laughs> but yes, Omega Lil, it feels like they're kind of under that pressure. Like, guys, we really want to take this next round of towers. I think one of the things they're waiting for right now is, oh, the hook shot in from Big Nub. Tried to go for the Cogs pushback, but instead he's denied. A telekinesis Aether Remnant, and he goes down before the rest of his team. Work it done could catch up, and now there's the Orchid done. That's what I was going to say. Wait for the Orchid on him and our Nature's Prophet. Uh, doesn't quite have that second item that he was looking for. I think it's actually going out to him now, the Desolator. How do you feel about this uh, Doom having an Iron Branch over an Ogre Club in his inventory? Uh, weird. I'm tilted. Is Maybe. Okay, no, 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 just wait. wait. Is he's there gonna, a reason? He's going to block one of these tree pathways okay. with the branch. He's thinking, thinking is there a reason 20 for steps the ahead. Is there a reason for the active? Yeah. So I guess... Come. Okay, with Timber Saw, I'm down. Yeah. The reverse Zai, where Zai, uh, you know, cut the tree the guy was trying mm -hmm. to Timber Chain to. He's going to plant a tree in yeah. the way of the Timber Chain? I see. <laughs> if he does it... Tried. We'll, we'll all remember this moment as you being... The most accurate you've ever been in your career, Cap. Telekinesis pull back, and it's not going to happen. The Doom will never get the chance to plant the tree, Brian! He gets orchided and deaded. And now... There's a real-life lesson to be learned from this, Cap. Yeah, what was that? When you're trying to, you know, counter deforestation, you just get cut down yourself. <laughs> I thought you were going to make some sort of life lesson about, like, being too clever for your own good or just go with the simple plans or something. But no, you you decided on an anti-environmentalism message. Yeah. It wasn't that I don't want you to save the environment. I'm saying that, you know, bad guys win and all that kind of crap. Oh, okay, okay. You might want to make that a little bit more okay, clear. Otherwise, okay, okay. it just sounds like Brian hates the trees. Uh, I'm saying if you go, if you try to fight the deforestation, <laughs> you get cut down yourself. I'm That's just like imagining the, somebody chaining themselves up to a tree and those those workers just being like, oh, well, okay, just cutting right through them. That's what Jesus, I imagine with that Jesus, analogy. Uh, Sometimes when you try and save the trees, you just get cut down yourself. <laughs> Gracious. Yeah, I've realized that a few of my jokes, or what you know, poor jokes, whatever, uh, they come off the wrong way. I've realized that numerous times recently. He's definitely all about that active on the tree, oh, by oh, the way. Oh, 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 the hook shot slides right on by and hits Lil instead. Now, they're still going to be able to get the Doom off onto the Timbersaw. Kuman is here to be able to clean up the fights. They've already killed the Rubik and Timbersaw. Big time trouble. The Wrath of Nature is going to go out, but if they're not careful... More heroes are going to be caught by this surge. Big Num looking to be able to catch up, looking for the body blocks here. Any dust, any vision? They tried to oh, blindly that was catch him. Interesting, actually. <laughs> and would have been cute. It would have been clever. They'd actually gotten it. He swapped the ogre club for the bracer, by the way. So he's very intent on keeping this iron branch. In his They're memory. really trying to catch up to Happy here because, well, there's going to be no real response. Nothing scares Kuman at this point. 
So how do they uh, kill this guy later? I don't know. I guess the Deso. Gonna... You, you did mention the Deso. Yeah. People may be like BSJ or Cap. Probably more willing to ask you, why buy a Deso? I've never seen that on Nature's Profit. And the answer is because they need physical damage against Handsome Mage, because that's he's the only guy that's ever going to dish it out. Yeah, and they've already got one Orchid. It'd be kind of weird if they double down on the Orchid, which is... Yeah, value item. They're going to be able to get the egg, the egg, the egg. Oh, it barely goes down. Magical. He's getting ripped apart by the Timber Saw. Sunlight's there to make sure he's not going anywhere else. The Sprout into the Timber Chain. Mwah. Four heroes dead in exchange for a little old Rubik. Yeah, sometimes you see like the Maelstrom though, right? You see the more farm oriented damage build to be magical procs like yep, Maelstrom yep. and MKB. But I think he's going to go for like the BKB AC Satanic route. Yeah, where uh, he like the AM shows up to a fight and he just turns on him. And yeah, goes, bop, 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 bop. Okay, well, hey, Omega Lil go from a bad fight to a great fight and they take a tier two finally, not before 20 minutes, but still important amount of map control to get here. I wonder if this Desolator, they're going to be able to put it to good use in the Roshan pit soon. So, you know, everyone was talking about how broken Nature's Prophet is. I still think he's a pretty damn good hero. I've got a question for you, because I didn't know this until about a couple months ago. Do you know what... By question, you mean quiz. Yeah, go quiz, on. quiz. Uh -huh. Do you know what Nature's Prophet agility gain is? I have no idea. What, like, what would you guess his agility gain is? Uh, he attacks pretty quickly. Okay. So he's got to have the highest agility gain of any of the intelligence hero. Uh, probably something over three. Yeah, it's 3.6. Wow. What's up with that? Why? Why? That is, sometimes you get these Nature's Prophet cores that become extremely deceptively tanky. Yeah. And it's like they get the BKB and they have tons of armor naturally. Yeah. And it just feels like you're, you're doing nothing to them. He has more Agi gain than like 80% of Agi. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, you know, if people ask why he works as a carry, it's just insane. That's the they nerfed his base armor, but that's the problem with the hero, in my opinion. Is the 3.6 agi gain as we do get to see a fight break out. Trying to get the doom onto the Dimber Saw, locked inside the cogs, bounced out by the cookie though. He's on the run. Oh, nice vacuum Very into the nice. wall, and they do have the supernova right out in the side, and what a pretty picture they just painted for themselves with that mana void. Still trying to chase down some more sunlight. Trying to astral step away. Gets hit by the infernal blade, takes a little bit more damage. Still trying to chase in. Oh, do we eat the remnant into the orchid. They don't have enough though. That sunray heal allows them the uh Animates just to be able to continue to play forward here. Cogs going out there, trying to push back Sunlight. Sunlight is in trouble right now with the BKB out for Magical. It just continues to focus down these heroes. The Ion Shell burning out Lil alongside the Scorched Earth. Kellen's going to be cleaned up by Kuman now, ripped apart by the Animage Illusions, burned out of his mana and burned out of his mind. Omega Lil bleeding out kill after kill after kill as Happy, who died once in this fight, He's gonna die twice, vacuum back in. They're actually gonna be buying back to be able to try and catch some heroes here. Magical, he's gonna be the one to get caught. So those buybacks may have just been worth it, especially if they can get a little bit more here. Slayer, TP's out successfully, but here comes Sunlight. Yule Scepter, Aether Remnants, surround him. Oh, Kuman actually going back in. He still has a mana void, that's why he's gonna be able to take Sunlight out. He just went from 100 to zero to damn nothing, Malik. He is uh, slowly being pecked apart by Big Num here. Finish him off with a hook shot. No need for Kumin. Clockwork will do it all by himself. What a disgustingly good fight for Cyber Legacy. Yeah. Invisibility. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is just the moment <laughs> where you look back on the draft, and for people who are trying to learn matchups, it's like all the casters, for a reason, saying Timbersaw does not look very fun this game. You're against a mana burning hero in the carry roll. He doesn't have to build an item to do it. You're against Clockwork, who's like a constant low cooldown stun that is super annoying to timber chain through. You're against Doom. You're against Phoenix, who's percent based damage, all magic. Mm -hmm. And you don't counter Darkseer, so. Would it be unfair of me to say that Omega Lil? Like almost all end on the laning phase in the first ten minutes. Yeah, of it's like not the thing that works, right? We've stuff. seen it so much recently; it sure. just doesn't work anymore. Like uh, last second game of that Liquid series, uh, five men were up by two thousand gold at six minutes. Yeah, and if you can't fight them, you just lose the game. 
Hook shot trying to save Magical here and get a kill on Lil in the process. Who thought he was good because he had stolen the Animage Blink. They spot Kellen. Kellen. He has his BKB. He'll just go for the TP out. Kumin. Mana Void him. Not going to say anything, Cap? I'll let you, uh... I'll let you have that one, Brian. Uh, it's just every time I'm ever on... This, these are the moments why I turn my cam off on stream, by the way. Is when I'm Necrophos and somebody's BKB TPing in front of me <laughs> and all the people are in chat are like... Bolt him! You're so... Uh, you're so... You're so... Sorry, I'm, I'm good. Even worse when your allies ping it too. Oh yeah, that's great. So then your chat thinks they're right? Yeah. They're always wrong though, chat. You guys, you can't mana void or neck. Oh, the hook shot through beat. actually hits the Void Spear and gets him away from all of that. Meanwhile, Kumin jumps away. Supernova being used here. Lil still hunting that Animage. Sees him He's farming, farming ancients. ancients. Oh, what a oh greedy play, Kumin. Why'd you have to do it? Come on, You bro. got Ancients on your own side of the map. Why'd you have to try and steal Omega Lil? Still, Omega Lil gonna take advantage of that misplay from Kumin and continue to fight this out. But a vacuum wall, it is dangerous for Kellen here who doesn't have his BKB. Pops a Wrath of Nature, but it doesn't do enough. He dies. Magical feels strong enough to continue to chase Lil. Still has that blink stolen from earlier, so he's able to get out. But Omega, Omega Lil just keep on losing four heroes every single team fight. I think... I know we're talking about the game still, but yeah. I really do think the ninth and 10th picks demonstrate the difference between tier one teams and, and the teams in the divine league. Like they're so close in terms of like their, their, their play is great. Like the execution mechanically is fine, but you're just seeing the game play out. And you're like, this Timbersaw was supposed to have like the perfect game. And yeah, you just, tend to pick it, right? He's just dead yeah. all the time. Two supports battling it out back and forth. They're saving each other. Happy. Oh, the telekinesis actually stops that, right? Yeah, there was the telekinesis that stopped that. Happy does eventually get found by Magical, though. So sadly, it would have been really cute if they'd both gotten out together alive. Sadly, no. Yeah, this is just looking like... So, so does that, if drafting errors, do you think that comes down to a fundamental misunderstanding of the game, or is that specifically about draft? Is that specifically just... I think just... drafting is completely linked to your understanding of the game. Mm. So if you have one, you don't have the other. And so I'd say what you asked is basically saying, is it is it yes or is it yes? And I'd say yes. <laughs> well, that's the perfect question for you, Brian. You can't get it wrong. Uh, nailed it. As, uh, yeah, they bring down the clockwork, but every kill for Omega Lil just doesn't really seem meaningful. Even when the AT Mage dies, like, yeah. that's supposed to lead to something, right? And him dying actually gave Cyber Legacy more net worth over the time that he was dead. Yeah. It went from 5k to 7k during the time AT Mage was on the, on the respawn timer. And part of that is they're just getting no objectives during that downtime, right? Objectives like this, and Omega Lil's currently trying to force him around the Roshan pit. It's certainly not free, and it could be disaster. They do manage to get a scan. They're going to jump forward. Lil, he just immediately goes in, grabs him the Slayer with the Telekinesis, and he realizes that was a bit of a folly there. Cyber Legacy, they're up on that high ground, ready to fight. They may, may not have had everyone, but they certainly had enough to deal with Lil. That might have been a little overstep by a little there. Indeed, indeed. And now Kuman's like, okay, that's a low health Roshan. They only have their four man, so let's just go into the Roshan pit and force them to fight us. Here comes the Snapfire ultimate here. Bingham looking to be able to intercept, so does Magical. They both go in and make sure Happy doesn't get any more off of that. Kellen, Kellen, goodbye, Kellen. Brian, this is just a slaughter at this point. It doesn't feel like Omega Lil can win a fight anymore. Okay. I'm just trying to turn this into an educational experience for people. Maybe that's mm -hmm. not what they want, but we learned this lesson in the Alliance series. Timbersaw, as an offlane hero, is about making space and enabling your carry who outscales the opponent carry to carry the game. Nature's Prophet does not outscale Anti-Mage. Yeah, no. Thus, you're making space for something that's not going to win by having the space. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at objectives and the reason why they can't take objectives. The hero that's supposed to walk down lanes to set up objectives is, like, really crucial for any team to have. Mm -hmm. In this game, Omega Lil drafted that hero as Timbersaw. 
and Timbersaw can't walk down lanes. Mm. Like, if they had picked a carry that could walk down lanes, even just like a PL or so, know, so they something done like that. Off lane, like, say they did, they did off the lane Void Spirit, or right? Off lane Nature's Prophet. Yeah. Right? And then just some carry that can walk down lanes, sure. as, like, against this lineup. It'd probably have to be a hero that doesn't actually physically have to be there since you're dealing with Doom and Clock and all that, like, pick off. But it's like. Because their heroes can't walk down lanes, they're never going to have lanes pushed. Mm -hmm. Like, if you compare the Timbersaw or Nature's Prophet trying to push a lane to Anti-Mage this game, right? Like, Anti-Mage, once he has Manta, can't really die unless he farms Ancients at 300 yeah. health. So, I, I just see this as I, lack I, of vision What, what I'm kind of hearing from this right now, Brian, is that you... Like, yeah, it's not the greatest Timbersaw game, and that was the last pick, but... Outside of that, even if it was a better Timbersock game, you still fundamentally disagree with the idea of what they were going for with the Nature's Prophet and this Tim Like, you're saying if you're going to have this hero, like, it, it cannot be your be-all, end-all, hardest carry. Like, yeah. you need to be able to have something bigger and greater. The type of Timbersaw games you win is the ones where you have a Phantom Lancer against Drow. Yeah. Or you have Spectre against, you know something that doesn't carry as hard as Spectre. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, those are the games that Timbersaw, okay. well, you know, Timbersaw, those are the games where he flourishes. But as we see here, one Look last fight, in. Big like dumb. Look at that. The Cogs protecting the Supernova egg pretty nicely. Malik's not going anywhere, that's for sure. And Kuman, well, he just hunts down whoever he's in blink range of, which he's going to go for a few more hops forward, see if he can catch Sunlight. Instead, he finds Creeps, which is not bad because... Well, he's the biggest, baddest man on the planet right now. 19,000 net worth lead and feeling fine. Guess that Dota buff percentage, Brian. 98, 97. 99? 97. 97. Can we roll it up? Can we see the win percentage here as soon as this fight is over? Because Big Num is going to make his jump for double. Well, now it's 98. He's got oh. Agonim Scepter. All right, now he says it's 98 after that kill. Do we have Dota Plus on this account? Okay, it's 100% well, now. That's my official gauge. Oh, they 99 said GG, to I nailed one. It. You were perfect, Brian. Dota Plus disagrees. It's actually 100%. I appreciate it. As uh, it, Those are the type of games 